Hello, welcome, Hello. welcome to 24-7 Contemporary Collecting. It's uh, the second uh, series of talks during uh, the Vienna Contemporary 2015. Uh, this uh, format is already in its third year of uh, the Vienna uh, Fair and uh, it's concentrating on questions of collecting contemporary art, private engagement for contemporary art and uh, engagement that goes beyond uh, just amassing many artworks. Uh, I'm very happy that I can welcome uh, as my guest today Mr. Gaudens Beruf. He has uh, intensive experience in the Bulgarian day-to-day -day life and also in the uh, contemporary art scene of Bulgaria. So he will talk a little bit later on. Uh, and I'm also very happy to uh, welcome Netko Solakov. I think he's a very well-known and respected artist from Bulgaria. And we will structure this uh, talk in a way that we maybe try in the beginning by some questions by myself to the uh, two guests here to concentrate a little bit on the surrounding situation in Bulgaria. And after that, uh, Mr. Gaudens Beruf will give an insight into his activities and then followed uh, by Netko Solakov to talk also about uh, his activities, also the engagement for a contemporary art center and so on, and in the end we will open uh, the, the floor to, to questions. I think um, if you look uh, from the perspective of coming from Germany, uh, you think in the beginning everything is quite normal in all these countries, there's a big support for contemporary art, there's infrastructures, there are galleries, it's somehow easy for artists uh, to make a living, to become an artist, to become supported. But if you look deeper into some countries uh, from the area behind the iron, former Iron Curtain, you realize that the conditions are very hard and very difficult and that it's uh, very tough uh, to develop also institutions, to develop structures. And I realized also that it's very much dependent from private initiatives that bring the thing somehow forward. I would like to start with some question to, to Netko Solakov out of the situation that he also experienced the transition period uh, and also know something about, let's say, the traditional way of uh, the academies learning how to become an artist and uh, it, it, I would be really interested to hear something about this early time of uh, the period around uh, 89, early 90s, how it was for you to work during this time. Uh, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> how many non-Bulgarians are here? <laughs> but okay, we leave this one. Uh, for uh, for the next step. Uh, it was not easy. Even uh, I would say now that it looks easy, but uh, it was not so easy back in the early 90s. I graduated 81, uh, the Art Academy in Sofia, mural painting, started making small narrative paintings without text uh, yet. And uh, I became a member of the Union of Artists, and then you have this kind of uh, structure of art world at that time. You have these national exhibitions, you take part in them. Uh, parallel to them, you do kind of avant-garde for Bulgaria stuff. And so then after uh, the fall of communism, you turn yourself towards uh, the West, trying to, trying to show and to develop, just, just to make it, to let you know, uh, to let you in 
to become an international artist or to become an artist who exhibits, let's say, in Germany or in England. And this was really easy, uh, very difficult, actually. Uh, lapsus, which is kind of subconsciously talking about something. Nobody knew anything about Bulgaria at that time. You just, you see in their eyes that they might think that there are some qualities in the stuff I'm showing them, but then in their eyes there is also the question, where do you come from? Nobody knew anything about Bulgaria, besides of Christo, Christo Evashev. Most of the people thought that it's also from Romania, not Bulgarian. That's it. They never ever heard anything about that. So it was really difficult. And it doesn't uh, look uh, so bright at the, the present, and neither so much the, the future. But we can talk about that later. And uh, Mr. Ruff, you came uh, into Bulgaria, into uh, Bulgaria, yes, that's right now. Uh, in, in, in which year and in which way you come, became connected to the country? Well, I was um, a Swiss diplomat in my active times, and I was sent to various places in the whole world. In uh, my young years, uh, it was Italy and India. Later on, it was Paris, UNESCO, and then uh, Ethiopia, Baltic countries, Bulgaria, plus Macedonia, and finally Serbia. So I, I was moving around my life uh, very often. And uh, as art uh, has always be, have always been my, my hobby, I was immediately interested in the local art scene. So I arrived in Sofia in 1995, uh, which was a crucial period because it was a, a kind of a semi-transition. You know, 89 had happened a little bit in this country. When I came, the communists were back in power. Uh, which also reflected on the art scene because uh, the, the avant-garde, of course, was completely neglected, uh, left aside, uh, not noticed at all. And uh, when I, in '95, then immediately I had some contacts. Actually, it was easy to me, for me because uh, many of interesting younger artists had been in an exchange in Switzerland, in, in Zurich. Uh, for a in, in a six-year-long scholarship program, so each of them spent uh, six months there. So they knew uh, my country, and uh, also actually, uh, so uh, it, they all uh, knocked at the embassy's door and uh, were not uh, not at all afraid to have a contact with a strange Swiss. So immediately, I had fantastic uh, contacts. Uh, as you said, it was. Uh, for me, also remarkable to see that there is a lot of young talent, and I realized it was not really valued uh, as it uh, should have been, and which also then prompted in me some uh, will to uh, commit myself to change a little bit this situation. Um, and um, I think uh, beside doing exhibitions in the embassy, you also started to collect and really support artists. Maybe we can also show uh, some, some of the works from your collection and you can give us a little bit the storyline and the connections and yeah. some introduction into it. Yeah, well, there, there, is, uh, there uh, was uh, uh, last uh, November um, an exhibition of my Bulgarian collection at the Sofia City Art Gallery, and you will see some of uh, the photos of actually practically all the works that were shown there in a quick uh, run. Uh, yes, of course, uh, I, I collected, but for me, maybe the, the impetus was not so much to collect and possess, but uh, to, to know the art scene and to know artists. And uh, I started after a few months already uh, to, to buy uh, a few things. Um, the fact is, of course, uh, I didn't start collecting art when I was in Bulgaria. It started when I was 25 as a youngster, when I uh, earned some money and had, could afford to have some, in the beginning, graphic art and so forth. So I have a, an Ethiopian art collection. I had a large Indian collection, which partly I sold. I, had, uh, I still have a Serbian collection and a Baltic collection. So it always reflects my commitment to the, my country of, of residence. And um, you, you were saying you were also coming in contact with the artists. So you are interested to, to discuss with them uh, themes and issues and political questions. Yes, I mean, after all, I was there in a political mission and politics were in the foreground for me all, all the time. And uh, artists, uh, especially in Eastern Europe, they were avant-garde, at least the artists I met, 
also in a political sense, because in these countries there is a lot of prejudice, a lot of fixed opinions about the neighbors, about the world, and so forth. And I met, let's say, in Bulgaria, artists who traveled to Turkey, for instance. You name it, because Turkey was is the arch enemy in the uh, general con concept, historic concept of this country, because it did uh, 500 years of wrong to these uh, poor Bulgarians, and uh, so it was a country to be avoided. But we had among the artists, we had open spirits. They said, "Well, let's go and see Istanbul. Let's go and see what happens there." And not only uh, Turkey, also the unknown neighbors around uh, Bulgaria, because actually, except for Serbia, Bulgaria. Parents uh, didn't know much or didn't want to know much, but I, I met artists who went to Bucharest uh, and to see what, what's going on there. So this was a fantastic, open, European-minded uh, group, which I met. Really much more uh, advanced, much more European than most of the politicians I met there. And uh, later on, you, you established some, some prize, also as a, a further step in the engagement. Uh, this is true, yes. Um, you mentioned before, when I was ambassador there, I have a, a Switzerland owns a very nice, not too big, uh, but very smart uh, little residence downtown, which was ideally placed to, to have exhibitions. So I invited in my, in my time there some 12 artists to have an exhibition in, in the rooms of this residence, and that were, was, which was greatly appreciated. Then after that, I was transferred to Serbia, to Belgrade, and of course, I couldn't do so much for my Bulgarian friends. I, I had some commitments for the Serbs. And uh, then I retired. And after two years of retirement, I said, well, I must do something. I, I still feel energetic enough to, to have a new program. Why not turn uh, to my hobby? Why not uh, turn uh, art to, uh, to the main activity? And I thought, okay, let's start some program. Uh, definitely not in Switzerland, because there is uh, plenty of, of uh, funds and scholarships and other schemes in Switzerland for artists living there. So I said, well, let's turn to my Bulgarian friends who are not so spoiled. And, uh, uh, I approached uh, uh, colleagues and friends um, in, in Bulgaria, also in Serbia. The Bulgarians, and I will pay the compliment now and again, uh, were extremely welcoming. They were extremely straightforward in accepting, they were enthusiastic in uh, collaborating with my programs. And so it happened that I founded uh, an arts award. Uh, which uh, a competition which took place uh, every year for five years with a major prize and a junior prize and an exhibition and a catalogue for uh, shortlisted artists. Now, uh, after five years, I thought, well, the formula is a little bit tired. I think we should change it. It is now transformed into a support program where artists and art organizers can ask uh, for some uh, money, some contribution to either to create uh, uh, artwork or uh, to organize an art event, to uh, do a, a publication uh, or a symposium or something like this. This is running right now in the fourth year and highly successful. Um, if, I, if I hear about these activities, uh, I would like to uh, ask you, I would like to ask you, Netju, how is the situation from an institutional side? Are artists supported in Bulgaria from institutions or are they more or less standing on, the, on their own? What do you think, Mr. Ruf? What was your impression when you were in Bulgaria? Not so much. <laughs> well. Okay, you are a diplomat still. That's why you don't want to answer that. Uh, listen, we have a Ministry of Culture which basically gives some money for this very event, the focus of Bulgaria. But besides this uh, amount of money, I would not say that they really help uh, the Bulgarian contemporary art, especially to go abroad. We're still missing from the Venice Biennale. We became notorious. Maybe this is just the art project. Bulgaria is not in the Venice Biennale, and that's it. That's the work. Uh, We're missing from many, many important exhibitions, international nowadays. And uh, the lack is not the lack of institutions. Apparently, there is a lack also <laughs> of art. Uh, these days opened a, a very important exhibition at Museum of Modern Art in uh, New York, which shows uh, uh, art from the 60s up to the 80s and the last century from South America and Eastern Europe. And I think that the only country is 
Bulgaria missing, just because apparently there are no artists. And unfortunately, I have to say that uh, during the socialist times, we had kind of a relative freedom, which appeared to be a really, really heavy burden for us. Because you can do some things up to a certain uh, level of freedom. And uh, if we would have been such under such a pressure like in the Soviet Union, maybe some underground art could have appeared and that underground art would have been shown now in New York. But no, after the changes, apparently, except for one artist who was doing very direct political caricatures of, uh, of the royal family of Todor Zhivkov, nobody appeared to be really suppressed and to, be, to have his work uh, hidden somewhere in the, in the drawers. So back to the institutions. Uh, I belong to a small but very effective uh, Institute of Contemporary Art, and I would say without modesty that we are doing basically the job of the Ministry of Culture uh, inside the country. Yara Bubnova uh, is the director, and we are 11 uh, artists and uh, culturologists and uh, curators. And uh, what we do for contemporary Bulgarian art, I think, is, uh, is kind of is, is our destiny. This is what, how we see our... Uh, our presence in, in Bulgaria, what we, we have to do with this. And it's not only for us, it's just for the, for the Bulgarian art scene. But besides that, of course, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, 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 some other institutions like uh, uh, Seriev uh, Contemporary, uh, the gallery and the associated, would you remind me please the, the name of the, or the non-for-profit organization, Open, exactly. City of Contemporary is maybe the only gallery, it is actually the only gallery who deals really with contemporary art nowadays in, in my country, which is not, also not normal. It's not normal to have only the Institute of Contemporary Art and to have only one private gallery which deals. So a little bit. Let's talk about art collecting. Huh? What do you think? Yes, um, I, I would just add one, one more question. Uh, because um, the missing uh, avant-garde of the 60s, 70s, 80s. It's not only a question of uh, that there is missing uh, art historical research. It's really missing because uh, there was a little bit too much freedom into some nowhere. Not too much. This is the fact. It, it misses. I used to belong to a group of artists called the City Group. We were five artists and Malta, uh, one art critic, who invited us, the painters, relatively well-known painters, back in 86, to make an exhibition with one condition, to have no painters, paintings in the show. So we did basic installations after a period of talking about this, discussing for two years. We are still considered to be the avant-garde for Bulgarian, avant-garde in quotation marks, even though we were well-established young painters. So you see, it's not really like an underground or, or, or this is our destiny, in a way. On the other hand, you have a, uh, you have a contemporary, you have uh, young artists, which they don't give a shit uh, about what it was before, and they just do what they would like to do. They feel themselves in, in this very present moment, like in a very present and very contemporary way, they express themselves. But again, they, they lack institutions to help them in my country. And as uh, some result, also you, you started also to collect for yourself and, and to support artists by buying books. We started, works. We started yeah. with Maybe my wife. We should show some. Can you yeah, we start are left with, alone? with my please? No. Uh, can we start the presentation with some of the? It is a long tradition in my country, and not only in my country, to, uh, to show, uh, to swap with artists. So since my student years, I always, uh, with artists and uh, fellow students, I like them, I, I, swap, I swap works. So what you see here is actually what I see every night when I lay down to, to, to sleep. Uh, before, uh, Doing that, uh, I'm in our sitting, uh, uh, our in sitting room. Slava is already longer time asleep, and in sitting room, I'm watching some movies, and I'm like, uh, like sleeping a little bit. So when I wake up and then I lay down on the bed just before fall asleep and reading a little bit, let's say autobiography by Charles Chaplin, this is what I see from from my uh, from my uh, from my pillow. In the very center 
is on the top is that work which was a present from Jimmy Durham back in 97. Uh, we are good friends with him already almost 20 years. And at that time, he was kind of playing a, a game, sending me faxes when he was uh, misspelling my name, Netko Solokolokov, Netko, and this, is, this one says with uh, uh, color pencil, Netko Solatiev is my favorite artist. Maybe subconsciously, at least at that time, when I put this some uh, 13, 14 years ago, and this one is surrounded by no use to tell the names because uh, they're mostly Bulgarian artists, except for Jimmy Durham in the middle, but they are surrounded by the Bulgarian classical masters, starting from Vladimir Mitrov Maestura, uh, from uh, Nikola Tanev, uh, from Zlatoj Boichiev, uh, from uh, Alexander Marinov, and so on and so on and so forth. I kind of subconsciously wanted to say, okay, Netko Solakov maybe just made it, at least to Jimmy Durham, to tell him that he's his most famous, uh, his most uh, favorite artist. Uh, at the beginning of the 90s, I had this kind of strange uh, uh, feeling against the Bulgarian classical masters that maybe thanks to them, it was so difficult to put your name outside Bulgaria. <laughs> and uh, even I had a project once in early 90s when I wanted seven of these drawings to transform them in some way. It was called Transformations. Uh, one of them, for example, to be cut on stripes and put again back uh, uh, in their uh, frame, uh, or to burn the Stoyan Venev drawing and to put it again in the frame. Of course, uh, uh, my father told me, if you want to, I to take a second heart attack, okay, do the project. And I, of course, I forgot about this uh, at all. The one that you see down, it is the first piece we bought with uh, my wife, Slava. This is Stoyan Sotirov, a drawing from the 40s. And then during the years, it started uh, step by step. Very late at night, sometimes, if I want really to enjoy part of my collection, I look at this uh, fantastic, in my opinion, uh, drawing with, uh, uh, with ink and, and, and feather by uh, Georgi Mashev, also an artist who is virtually not known outside Bulgaria. And this is again Jimmy Durham, which stays behind my, uh, my back when I'm watching my films. It's called The House. And what you can see here is a uh, Maybe the biggest piece we have uh, with uh, my wife, uh, it's a uh, uh, wallpaper by Peter Kogler, with whom we exchanged works back in 98. He got number one from my performance, uh, Live Black and White. At that time, nobody knew about that performance. And I received this huge wallpaper that I could be uh, reinstalled whenever I want. And this is uh, uh, on, the, on the wall next to it. Uh, you have uh, down is uh, Thomas Hirschhorn, Exchange with Thomas Hirschhorn, exchange with uh, the, the well-lit drawing is by Wim Delvoix. In the middle is another exchange with uh, Gelatin. Then on the top you have, uh, top left is uh, Andrew Vekua. Uh, I think it's uh, Kabakov, and then it's Jacques Villigle, Stephen Balkenhol that we, we bought, uh, Eric Van Lisholt we also bought, and Roman Ondak and Erwin Wurm exchange. So this is like a small part of what is, what is around me. And uh, so here you have Noshito Munara. On the top is Raymond Pettibon, exchange with Georg Kargel. Now I work with Georg Kargel. The drawing down, the very down, there is an edition by Siu Floe. On the one between Yoshito Munara and Siu Floe is uh, Job van Lieshout, which is exchanged with Mrs. Krinzinger. And uh, another one bought uh, by, uh, from Anthony Reynolds, it's Emily Jassir on the top left. Mark Dayan from Tanya Bonagdar, and so on and so forth. So the one in the middle, you see uh, it's uh, Montan and Rosenblum. And for that one, what I exchanged was that drawing. So they selected the drawing of like a three of them, of choice, and they received another one. This is Karen Zander, one of her male paintings, which is just sent like that. Oops. I don't know why this one turned upside down, but you can imagine me put like this. This is another work uh, we have with, uh, uh, from her, our scans of me and my wife. And this is one of the very first pieces we bought and one of the first pieces to be installed by the other uh, Pravdulyup Ivanov, uh, which is 150 meters of cable and on... Excuse me, why, why uh, some of the images there just flip the, something happened when you transform the images. Sorry, so imagine that this one is like that. 
it's, it, it's vertical. And uh, there is this uh, huge uh, uh, bookshelves, and on the left-hand side you have uh, uh, books, again, of contemporary artists, and my biggest pleasure is when sometimes we get something with my wife, I move from the left side of the, of the shelves the book on the right-hand side of the shelves, which is devoted to, to our collection. And here you can see some small pieces by David Shrigley, and uh, on the top, and so on and so forth. I think it's uh, like a small insight of what we have. But we also have a lot of works in the storage. And if we have time, I can show uh, you some, uh, only the women artists, which uh, thanks to uh, Yara Bubnova as a curator, we uh, show only the women artists on the International Women's Day Eve, which happened the last year on 8th of March in uh, 2014 in our Institute of Contemporary Art. So if I come back to the situation of the institutions in uh, Bulgaria, I think there was uh, the Institute of Contemporary Art established. Do you know something about it and how it was developed? Or have you been involved in that too? Or is, was this more... Uh... Well, a member is uh, sitting there. <laughs> of course, uh, Netko will explain much uh, more in detail than I can. I was um, witnessing the, the birth uh, uh, phase of, of this institute, which was uh, um, born out of the fact that uh, the official institutions in, in Sofia, in Bulgaria, uh, would hardly care for contemporary art and would not uh, have a collection of documentation, basically, also. So uh, nobody would knew what all these initiatives from the artists, artist groups, and so forth uh, would, would really do. And uh, ICA, in my, as I uh, remember, uh, started to document uh, the whole uh, phenomenon and also to try to build the bridges outside because the official Bulgarian uh, cultural policy was kind of ignoring there is a whole world of contemporary art and it would be necessary that uh, Bulgarian artists would join the choir of, of this international uh, art development. So ICA played a crucial role in, in networking and in uh, taking up and contacts, which was extremely important. Uh, one fact was when I came that was uh, that Bulgarians uh, were uh, sorry and uh, hated the fact that they were not known abroad and uh, they were not invited abroad because of ignorance outside. The other fact was also that, of course, hardly any foreign artist would come to Bulgaria. And this is still the case, of course. This is still one of the big problems. There is a relatively lively uh, gallery scene. There are plenty of exhibitions going on. The, the scene is lively. But foreign names are hardly to be found. So the, there are many, uh, very few Western artists, I know about the Swiss art scene also, that would think it interesting to go there to this country and show uh, what, what they do and to collaborate. Usually the experience experience of this handful of Swiss artists who went there, who dared to go there, was fantastic. They all came back and said they had hardly met any uh, uh, such a lively, um, young uh, and uh, enterprising art scene. And uh, can you tell us something about the background of the uh, ICA, why it was founded, what is the uh, mission, idea, the dream of this institution? I mean, our director is here, Yara Bobnova. I, I guess, yeah, she's here. Maybe she can tell exactly, precisely, because I may kind of uh, mix the facts. It was established in 95, 20 years ago. And the idea was just uh, people who trust each other. We are basically friends, but we are friends not just because we were school friends or like a schoolmate from our, uh, when we were like a teenagers. No, we became friends just because we believe in in, in, the, in the same type of art we would like to, to develop. And what we really wanted to do is to, to go outside, I mean, just to, to establish this, uh, what we are doing, to establish it outside Bulgaria as well, mainly. And uh, this was the, the, the purpose, at least, at least for me. And uh, we are kind of working in a, I would say, a little bit idealistic way, because very rarely we get, uh, uh, we get grants no support from the state whatsoever. And uh, everything we are putting, our own resources, our own money in order to realize uh, exhibitions and projects and to do publications. 
So, if we take this situation, uh, it seems that uh, private engagement is really needed. If the state is not doing anything and the culture is cultural part is not missing. Uh, you mentioned uh, that you moved from the uh, prize that was running for some time now to a different program. Yes. Maybe you could plain, explain the program a little bit more in detail that you are trying to establish. Yeah. Yes, I realized that this uh, beauty contest formula, which is a competition for, for uh, an award uh, has um, become a bit tired. Uh, I realized that some artists just hated to, to compete in, in such a competition and they never came. Uh, and others uh, like to compete and they came every year, so, but they, we were a little bit on uh, caught in, in, in one line. So I thought, okay, well, let's drop this idea. But I, know, I knew, of course, that every artist and art organizer needs funds. So there's always a terrible loss of time for all these people to, to get the funds. I say, okay, let's open another source. And uh, as it stands now, artists and art organizers can apply uh, twice per year for a, a contribution to an art project. An artist needs materials and, and so forth, so he or she can uh, uh, submit the project, which is then judged by a jury whether interesting enough to be supported. Also, art organizers can uh, apply if they want to uh, organize a group exhibition, a symposium, or uh, do a publication, and they need support. And again, they can submit uh, their project, and a jury will judge on whether we can take it into account or not. It's, it's highly popular, so I see every year, I see uh, half a dozen of publications or events <laughs> that we, we sponsored. Um, somebody a lot of people actually warned me and I said, well, you know, if you, if you support projects that do not exist yet, you, you might uh, be badly disappointed because the artist disappeared and the project is not properly executed or they present bills that are fake and so forth. I must say that 95% of my clients, of our customers, are working extremely fast and extremely correctly. So the formula in Bulgaria works. Uh, I think you uh, can uh, get a little bit an inside view into some of the Bulgarian uh, artists in uh, this kind of special focus uh, here uh, at the fair on near the entrance area. And uh, I think there are also some people you can meet and talk with because I think that's the beginning uh, of uh, something that can be developed, the dialogue. I think the dialogue in between artists, the dialogue in between collectors and people that can mediate the content, uh, and also the dialogue um, in between Europe and uh, in a wider perspective. Uh, I think uh, Europe uh, needs also to open up its eyes and to focus uh, more on uh, countries that are not in, in the center somehow in the moment and uh, it's maybe also a little bit a mistake of an uh, art market who is only interested in creating money, creating money, creating money. So something can be done. But um, I, I, would ask, I would like to ask you, Netko, what do you think could be the next steps to develop something even in some micro steps for the Bulgarian art scene? I mean, I was really happy that uh, this one happened now, just because uh, in the Bulgarian section here, the Bulgarian focus, I am able to meet younger than me artists who I, even though I met before, but I never really listened to them, what they are talking. I know a little bit their work. And now when we have this discussion uh, around uh, the Bulgarian bar over there, for me it becomes uh, kind of really nice, I have a really nice feeling that uh, the people, they're just doing their work and they are inside Vienna, they're inside the European art scene and the things they are kind of going. But uh, listen, you have to have like a step by steps, but this step by step is really, I'm, I'm really tired of like a talking about them. Because 
20 years we are kind of struggling for such things which we became notorious about this participation of the Venice Biennale, taking part in another important exhibitions, uh, just to have like a, the, 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 to know what's going on in Bulgaria in order to, to try to present it outside. And uh, I truly believe in the, in the effectiveness of small organizations like, uh, like ours or like uh, the Land Documenti. Uh, the other organization or like a series of contemporary and uh, some uh, small other ones which happen to be much more effective than, uh, than the big ones. Uh, as far as I understand, the problem might be also uh, the, the education of the general public then in Bulgaria. The understanding for maybe the necessity and the quality of contemporary art and that it can uh, tell us also mm -hmm. yeah. to us in our normal life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think this is my uh, experience, what, what I learned about the situation. Uh, in my country, contemporary art is part of the curriculum at, at, the, at the grammar school. So everybody knows a little bit about Picasso and uh, way back also. Uh, so uh, to my knowledge, uh, this is not yet uh, sufficiently included in the um, the Bulgarian training at, at grammar schools. Uh, so the, uh, this is one thing. The other thing is, of course, uh, of course we have a lot of people that have hardly any money in Bulgaria, but we have some rich people also, new rich and so forth. They uh, have not yet discovered uh, uh, what it uh, needs to be really uh, in, in a classy upper class uh, situation. That is, in the Western people, uh, to, uh, uh, to be part of, of, the, of the smart guys, you must be interested or you must own some contemporary art. There is a snob appeal effect, effect about art. And this has not yet spread uh, among the, the rich uh, Bulgarians. So they, 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 if, if they invest money, it goes into football maybe or into nightclubs and so forth. But it doesn't go into um, uh, something a little more intellectual and a little more demanding. And so I think. Uh, uh, this is what I took as my role. I mean, I'm being very frank and ironic with you. You know, I, th I thought, I, I use my former title of an ambassador. I say, well, you know, there is a Swiss ambassador representing a rich country, and he collects contemporary Bulgarian art. So there must be something about it. So this is the, uh, kind of a message, as I said, ironically, you know, I wanted to transmit. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I was very successful, but still. I think that one day some rich Bulgarians say, well, why on earth is it the Swiss who buys this? Why don't we do it? Yeah. So, and I do hope, I do have successors, and I mean Bulgarian successors. Uh, there are some Bulgarian who collect art, like uh, Mr. Spastrusev, who was supposed to be here who basically has uh, the most comprehensive uh, uh, collection of international art uh, based in London, but uh, some of his pieces, they are also presented in Sofia. Unfortunately, uh, he was not able to be here, but uh, he and uh, one or two other exceptions is kind of not enough. And uh, we know, Mr. Ruf just mentioned that there are really a lot of really, really rich Bulgarians. And maybe overnight they, suddenly, overnight they will suddenly decide, okay, let's have contemporary art. Which doesn't mean that they will know what they're going to buy. Which uh, for the work and for the artists, maybe it would be good for the artist to take some money, but the person who will buy it maybe will not know at all what he or she is buying. The image that was, uh, is it possible to have the last image from, from my presentation there? I, I mentioned that I'm, I'm, I'm swapping with, with artists. So maybe, maybe no news because the people, they just saw what it was. It was a small piece, the last piece that I swapped with fellow artists, uh, with uh, Shilpa Gupta, this relatively young Indian artist, just to make the, the loop with the Indian artists. And, uh, I was very happy that she got one of my drawings and I got this uh, beautiful small piece of her. And uh, you saw my hand with the piece uh, packed with the two original nails coming from uh, Calcutta. 
that they're supposed to, uh, to put uh, this uh, work which is called Manifesto, the, the book which is cut out inside and stays on these two uh, a little bit rusty nails. So I got the work in, in Basel, outside of the fair. And she got also outside of the fair my drawing. <laughs> but also we buy, I buy at the fair as well. Especially 2012, also thanks to Mr. Rusev acquisition of one of my works, and thanks to some other acquisitions, I got, uh, it was also a stay for quite some time. Uh, uh, the, no, no, it's no use to, to, to list all of them. Uh, there was a work by Martin Creed, which uh, so far is the most expensive uh, piece in, uh, in our collection. So if we can summarize up everything, I think what we do, the artists, we, we just do our job as it should be done. And we do hope that together, kind of supporting ourselves, I'm an artist myself, but I also support the, the younger ones, so I'm also kind of a collector. Hopefully the collectors will not become artists, so to, to, to know what to do with them. Uh, we, we've, we've heard before there's uh, some kind of missing uh, understanding for the importance of contemporary culture in uh, Bulgaria and the general public. How is the situation for the art schools, like the academies? Are academies open to contemporary art? Do they, have, do they teach about what is going on in the world? I mean, Pravdulup Ivanov, he's teaching in the academy, and uh, there are maybe one or two other people who are really into the international art scene, and they, they give at least lectures there. But uh, on my opinion, this is not enough. I mean, they, they don't have the habit, uh, uh, the art academy in, uh, in Sofia, to, to invite lecturers from abroad, or uh, even some of us, uh, like Luchazar Boechiev, I think he makes occasionally lectures there. Myself, my, the one and only lecture was back in 99, which was a long, long time ago. With uh, Yara Bobnova, we organized an exhibition, our institute, which was called Locally Interested. And we invited uh, Douglas Gordon, uh, Peter Kogler, Pipiloti Ris, Rikri Tervanidze, Ole Kuli, Kuri Tsaik, and uh, myself. I didn't want to take part at the beginning, but I had to deal with some existing features inside the space. So all of these artists, they gave lectures in the art academy. All the students, they had the possibility, there were like a 300, 350 people per lecture. They have the possibility to listen to, uh, I already told you the names, but our institute had to pay the academy a rent for the space. <laughs> so you see, this one still goes on. It's the same attitude. So as we see, the situation is not easy, but uh, regardless of that, if you uh, look uh, a little bit deeper behind this kind of curtain still, uh, you, you find uh, very exciting uh, artworks from Bulgaria and uh, a very intelligent concept. So it's really worth uh, to take a deeper look into that. I think uh, for the moment, I would open the floor for some questions, if there are some. Let me contribute a little anecdote. We are doing a study about collecting in the former socialist countries during some years already. And when we started our study uh, in Bulgaria, uh, the author is Vesela Nosharova. She is not here now anymore. Uh, she is one of the curators uh, on this Focus Bulgaria show. Um, everybody told me in, in Bulgaria, well, there, is, there are one and a half collectors in Bulgaria. One of them is Ned Kozolakov. It was always said. Then I met Netko and I said, no Netko, I heard one and a half collectors and so which one are you? And he said, well, I'm afraid I'm the one and the half. So that was the situation some years ago, not so long ago, uh, about private collecting in Bulgaria. And I would, would like to bring a little bit of optimism. There are changing and there is some development. Yeah. Keep the optimism. <laughs> um, 
Thank you very much for uh, for this uh, talk. Uh, what you can see now that in Bulgaria we are facing up with lots of problems, uh, already contextual problems, not only for se selling and buying card, but the problem is who is buying card. Um, we we have great support from Netco, from Gaudens Roof. I'm very happy that I sold work to Netco, even he is uh, part of our gallery list and uh, received grants from uh, Mr. Roof. He is also uh, supporting us uh, for Focus Bulgaria, that I'm organizer, and uh, Mr. Roof is supporting this project with half of the amount. It's the uh, same part from Ministry of Culture and same part from uh, Mr. Roof, so you can imagine. Uh, but uh, at the end, we need people to buy, um, not only to give general support. Uh, and I think these people, they, they are coming with their interests without no idea who is who and the artists, they just uh, need to fall in love with these uh, works. So what, what we need is uh, to, to have more buyers, international, uh, Bulgarian as well, and uh, to have more to have more galleries that support Bulgarian artists. Um, at the end, after this fair, okay, we as Surrey of Contemporary we organized Focus Bulgaria because we need to have larger uh, context, and then uh, to attract curators, other colleagues, galleries to to Bulgarian artists uh, to discover them. So. The only thing is uh, this communicate to develop the communicational system, um, all of us. Of course, uh, there are other collectors uh, that are not visible um, in Bulgaria. Uh, for example, um, I can tell you that my um, accountant, she is collector and she is very good co uh, collector, but nobody knows her. So they um, they can they they are not fitting in the this idea of collecting. She is buying card, but she she don't know about other collectors and she don't accept. Okay, I'm collector. Um, so there are lots of things to work on. Yeah, I don't know what I said that, but uh, just to <laughs> to orientate the talk about the buying card also. <laughs> There's a question there in the corner. Uh, actually, two questions, if I may. Um, first of all, I wondered about the general appreciation of art in Bulgaria. Is there just a lack, not, I mean, I mean just, a lack of interest in contemporary art that is being generated in the, their own country? And are there exhibitions or museums that show international art or more established art? Is there a great difference between art being produced nowadays in Bulgaria and established or widely accepted art? Um, that would be my first question. And the second one, um, due to the lack of um, a broad infrastructure for artists, are there a lot of artists moving abroad and working in different countries? And how is their situation? And is there contact between artists Bulgarian artist working in Bulgaria or working in other places? Thank you. I guess I should, should answer this as far as I, I'm able to answer it. Uh, there are institutions still that they support contemporary arts. I, I was talking, uh, when I say lack of institutions, it was mainly presenting Bulgarian art abroad. But inside the country, there is a, a Sofia City Gallery which is uh, the municipal gallery of the city of Sofia, and thanks to the, uh, to the, to the curators there, they uh, started a program some years ago to fill the gap, because you know, after 89, the state stopped to buy contemporary art. So there was this gap of around 20 years when the, the works, they just physically perished, that they were not here anymore. So they collected and they really filled that gap with a very, very good uh, pieces. And in a very good way, they also deal with their collections. Sometimes inviting artists like Uchazar Boechiev to deal with the collection, to see through like a new eyes. Uh, there is a newly, uh, a newly established, newly open, uh, a big museum complex called the Square 500, uh, which uh, uh, its aim is also to show contemporary art, not right now, but uh, in the future, in the future exhibitions. And uh, uh, 
Yes, a lot of Bulgarian artists, they left Bulgaria, especially in the early 90s. Uh, a lot of them, like every day was going, like uh, several of them were flying to Canada and then going back to, uh, going down to, uh, to the States. Mm, unfortunately, nobody really made, made it, nobody. Uh, but uh, there is a, a, a really a, a very important group of artists with Bulgarian origin here in Vienna. And uh, uh, almost all of them, I think, they are on that wall uh, over there, Bulgaria Focus. In, if I may say something as a collector, something very optimistic with a little bit pessimism inside, I would love to have the entire wall in my collection. The pessimism is that I don't have the money now because I'm building a big house with a big studio. <laughs> so, but I really, I really like uh, uh, that wall. And that wall is the, the only uh, a real uh, proof that it is great what is going on now in Bulgaria and even with uh, uh, the lack of uh, uh, international recognition, we do have international recognition, but maybe we just think that all the others, they are in a much, much better situation than us. But that wall really speaks for itself and really shows that there is something which is, which is very vivid, very contemporary, and it's something there in that uh, crossroad which uh, from, for the Westerners, uh, they still kind of mix it with uh, Romania or Bucharest or Budapest. What is this Sofia? Maybe it's in Greece, maybe it's in Skopje. But it is there, and this there kind of moves constantly, and it's really part of, uh, at least from the European art scene. Okay, so I would like to thank you for your attention, and please excuse uh, for the annoying noise in the back it's uh, maybe also very hard to concentrate. Um, welcome you also to the next talks on uh, coming uh, Saturday. We will focus more on the fair and, and the, on the Vienna fair. Uh, and there will be a last talk of this series of 24-7 contemporary collecting on coming Sunday, which also gives a very interesting insight into the situation in uh, Ukraine. Uh, so, enjoy the day, go to the Focus Bulgaria and thank my uh, two guests for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.